Hi, I'm Pranav Mehra, founder of Indian Competition Law Group and member of the Competition Law Section of National Bar Association of India. I'm here to give you an overview of Indian Competition Law in practice. India is the seventh largest country by area, the second most populous country with over 1.2 billion people and the most populous democracy in the world. The Indian economy is the world 10th largest by nominal GDP and third largest by purchasing power parity. Following market-based economic reforms in 1991, India became one of the fastest growing major economies to fuel the economic growth and sustain it India's inter alia focusing on driving competition, enhancing efficiencies in the market and protecting consumers. During the last year, the Competition Commission of India has continued to focus on detecting anti-competitive practices in the market and removing various market distortions. Enforcement actions have been undertaken against anti-competitive agreements, including cartels, collusive bidding and abuse of dominant position. The Commission also introduced mandatory merger review guidelines with effect from 1st June 2011. The video will take you through various developments in the Indian competition law arena before it came into existence, during the time it was coming into existence and the developments of the competition law that have happened after the CCI came into existence. So for years after independence, India followed the strategy of planned economic development. There were government imposed controls over entry and exit in the market. Plant and firm size were subject to statutory limitations and imports and foreign investments were restricted. Government-owned business enjoyed protections and preferences and dominated the commanding heights of economy. These policies were reflected in many of the state economic policies. In the system, there was little place for competition policy. While the economic strategy helped in many ways, including the growth of basic industries in the 1980s, it began to be realized that it was severely constraining entrepreneurial growth. The new economic policies in 1991 progressively widened the space for market forces and reduced the role for government in business. It was recognized a new competition law was also called for because the existing Monopolies and Restricted Trade Practices Act 1969, shortened to be called the MRTP Act, had become obsolete in certain respects and there was a need to shift the focus from curbing monopolies to promoting competition. It is worth to observe that the MRTP Commission established under the earlier legislation that this MRTP Act was enacted primarily to curb monopolies and concentration of economic power had only limited powers. It was only empowered to investigate into restricted trade practices, that is RTP, and unfair trade practices, UTPs. Between the two, UTP gained the momentum because the impact of orders benefited the aggrieved consumers significantly. But with the coming of consumer course post 1986, all the places the rejection of MRTPC and consumer got overlapping and resulted in ushering of forum shopping and multiplicity of litigations on some issues between the parties. Important RTPs involving big ticket enterprises were rarely got concluded at the Commission's level and invariably travelled up to the Supreme Court in appeal. The Supreme Court more often than not found infirmities in the order of the Commission. Besides foregoing came the further amendments to the MRTP Act in 1991 in the wake of economic liberalisation and consequently Chapter 3 of the Act was deleted. Chapter 3 primarily dealt with concentration of economic power, mergers, amalgamation and takeover. So with this deletion, the Commission lost its feeble power of recommendation into mergers and acquisition activities in India. Post-1991, scenarios forced the government to ponder over the issues relating to as whether or not to continue with the MRTP Act and the Commission established under it. There were two clear options available with the government. One, either to thoroughly amend the existing MRTP Act to match the change economic scenario of India or to appeal the law and enact a new piece of legislation which would uh, contain features of the latest international best practices. The kind of amendments that could make sense was felt to be identical to writing a new legislation and as such a highly powered committee was set up in 1999 to assess all aspects of the situation. 
The committee, headed by SVS Raghavan, found that MRTP Act to be failing short of securely addressing competition and anti-competitive practices. It found that the MRTP Commission's power under the Act were quite restrictive and was ill-equipped. The committee emphatically stated that the MRTP Act, in comparison with competition laws of many countries, is inadequate for fostering competition in the market and trade for reducing, if not eliminating, anti-competitive practices in the country's domestic and international trade. Based on the analysis, the Darwin Committee found it expedient to have a new competition law. It will be useful to understand the underlying principles that led to the new enactment. Uh, it is to be noted, while competition cases are tried by courts in many countries, the Darwin Committee did not find it suitable for India, given the inexperience of the judiciary in dealing with free market problems. So according to the committee, a specialized agency was preferable. The problems relating to free and fair trade and relating to restrictive and other prohibited trade practices like abuse of dominance require certain level of specialized knowledge in economics, trade and relevant law for adjudication. Uh, even if the judiciary had the deputation and exposure to commerce and market related matters, the competition law administration would have been better handled if a specialized agency is set up for the purpose and therefore the Raghavan committee recommended that the administration and enforcement of competition law in India should be under a specialized court. The committee emphasized that a body should be independent and autonomous. Its investigative, prosecutorial and administrative functions need to be separate and its proceedings should be transparent and rule bound. The competition authorities reach should be extraterritorial and it should have powers to punish the guilty and levy fines. Further, the committee felt that there is low awareness of competition issues among the stakeholders and the governments, central and states both in India. So it laid great emphasis on competition advocacy and thus uh, the Competition Commission of India was proposed. On the recommendation of the committee, India enacted the Competition Act 2002 with effect from 14 January 2003. On the recommendation of committee, India enacted the Competition Act 2002 with effect from 14 January 2003. As a result of the report submitted by the committee's recommendation, the Competition Act 2002 came into being in January 2003. The CCI was established on 14 October 2003. Chairman members were appointed by the central government. The Act states, It shall be the duty of the Commission to eliminate practices having adverse effect on competition, to promote and sustain competition, protect the interest of consumers, and ensure freedom of trade carried on by other participants in market in India. Thus, it gives Commission a heavy mandate. Interestingly, the constitutional validity of the establishment of the CCI came to be challenged in the case of Brahmadath vs. Union of India. It was mainly challenged on the ground that the CCI envisaged by the Act was more of a judicial body having adjudicatory powers on questions of importance and legalistic in nature and the background of doctrine of separation of powers recognized by the Indian constitution. The right to appoint the judicial members of the commission should rest with the Chief Justice of India or his nominee and further the chairman of the commission had to be necessarily retired chief justice or judge of the supreme court or of the high court to be nominated by the chief justice of india or by the committee presided over by the chief justice of india in other words the contention was that the chairman of the commission had to be a person connect with the judiciary picked for the job by the head of the judiciary should not be a bureaucrat or other person appointed by the executive without reference to the head of the judiciary. The contention was based on the principle of separation powers on the lines of the 1987 case of Sampath Kumar versus Union of India. It was also contended that the CCI was an expert body and it is not as if India was the first country which appointed such a commission presided over by persons qualified in the relevant disciplines other than judges or judicial officers. However, the Apex Court refrained from giving a judgment as there were affidavits filed by the Union of India stating that there has been proposed amendments to the effect so as to enable the chairman and members to be selected by a committee presided over by the Chief Justice of India or his nominee. Hence, the court stated that one should look at the amendment as and when notified and then address the issues of constitutionality. 
in this background, the government passed a competition amendment bill 2006 and uh, the mentioned bill was passed by both the houses and necessary changes were made under the Competition Act 2002 while the Competition Amendment Act 2007. The various changes were made to make Competition Act so as to make CCI fully operational on a sustainable basis. The Competition Amendment Act 2007 provided for the establishment of appellate tribunal for adjudicating claims for competition and for hearing appeals against the direction of decisions made or order passed by the Commission. The Commission has the investigative and decision-making power. It does not have any power to grant any compensation to any affected party as this power rests with the Competition Appellate Tribunal. In order to make it exercise that power effectively, the Act empowers the Commission to penalize those who obstructs the investigation contravenes orders, destroy or falsifies document, supply misleading information, etc. Now I'll speak about after the commission came into existence. Uh, access to the commission. The commission is the sole authority to receive complaints against the infringement of competition law from individuals, business firms, entities, central state governments. The Commission can commence an inquiry into contravention of Section 3.1 or Section 4.1 either on its own motion or on the receipt of a complaint from any person, consumer or their association or trade association. The term person is defined in the Act and it's a broad category that includes an individual, a company and a firm. It also includes an association, corporation, body corporate, corporate society, or a local authority. Further, Section 2L includes every artificial judicial person not falling within any of the preceding sub-clauses. Thus, any person with, within or outside India or any association or body of persons incorporated in or outside India or any company incorporated in or outside India is eligible to approach the Commission against an anti-competitive act prohibited. The legal entity and composition of the Commission. The Commission currently resides in New Delhi. It may also establish other offices at other places of India. The Commission is to consist of chairperson and not less than two members and not more than six members. The CCI is a multi-member body comprising of eminent and erudite persons of integrity and objectivity from the fields of judiciary, economics, law, international trade, commerce, industry, accountancy, public affairs and administration. Now we'll speak on the appointment of Director General. Uh, the central government appoints the Director General for assisting CCI in conducting inquiry into the contravention of any of the provisions of the Act or to perform other functions as provided by or under the Act. The additional joint deputy and assistant director generals or such advisor, consultants and officers so appointed shall exercise their powers and discharge their functions subject to the general control, supervision and direction of the DG. The DG shall, when directed by the Commission, assist the Commission in investigation into any contravention of the provisions of the Act. The DG does not have any sumoto powers to initiate any inquiry as it in the case with Office of Free Trade under the UK Competition Law. The Director General shall have all the powers as are confirmed upon the Commission. The Commission has powers to issue summons and examine on oath. Second, require discovery and production of documents. Thirdly, receive evidence on affidavit. Fourth, issuing commissions for examination of witness or documents. Fifth, requisitioning public record or document or copy of such record or document from any office. These powers can be exercised by DG while investiga investigating a contravention. Now we'll speak on powers and function of the commission. The CCI has the powers not only to formulate own rules and regulations to govern the procedures and conduct of its business and administration, but also has the powers to frame regulations which supplement the provisions of Competition Act, since some of these regulations which supplement the competition law have to have a direct bearing with prevalent economic conditions, the CCI can from time to time review and amend these regulations. Furthermore, the Act has extraterritorial jurisdiction. The Commission shall have the power 
to inquire into an agreement or abuse of dominant position or combination even if the act has taken place outside India or the party or enterprise is outside India, provided uh, that it has an appreciable adverse effect on competition in the relevant market in India. Thus, the governing factor is the effect in the domestic market for the purposes of discharging its duties or performing its function the Commission may enter into memorandum or arrangement with the prior approval of the central government with any agency of any foreign country. This provision is in support of the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the Commission. Currently, India has tied up with the US FTC and DOJ and has entered into an MOU. The Act also prescribes that the Commission in discharge of its function shall be guided by the principles of natural justice and the concerned parties can appear before the Commission in person or shall through authorized chartered accountants, company secretaries, caste accountants and legal practitioners. In order to achieve said objectives of the Act, the Commission is vested with functions and powers to inquire into certain agreements and dominant position of an enterprise, conduct such inquiry and pass certain orders which which must meet the administrative law standards of reasonableness, fairness, proportionality, and being consistent. It is noteworthy that in terms of Section 27, the Commission can pass all or any of the following orders. First, when it comes to conclusion that enterprises or agreements and there have been an abuse of dominance, uh, it could be direct discontinence of such agreement and abuse of dominance, uh, impose penalty to the extent of 10% of the average turnover for the last three preceding three financial years upon such persons or enterprises. In case of cartels, uh, impose penalty on each member of cartel up to three times of its profit for each year of the continence of agreement or 10% of its turnover for each year of continence of such agreement, whichever is higher. Uh, it can also modify the agreement, pass any orders direction which they deem fit, order division of enterprises in joint dominant position, inquire into the combinations in the manner and pass such orders as prescribed under the Act. In respect of the combinations, the Act empowers the Commission to approve the combination where there are no competition concerns, direct the parties not to give effect to the combination where there are competition concerns. And thirdly, propose amendments to the combination if the commissioners of the view that combination can, the competition concerns can be eliminated by such amendment. The commission is empowered and has jurisdiction to pass ex parte interim orders temporarily restraining parties from carrying on any act where the commission has initiated an inquiry or is conducting an investigation during the pendency of such investigation or inquiry and when the Commission is satisfied that an Act is in contravention with the provision of Section 3, 4 or 6 of the Act. The Commission has extraterritorial jurisdiction in the Act taking place outside India but having effect on competition in India. The Competition Commission is in part to rectify any mistake apparent on the face of order but cannot, while rectifying the order, amend the substantive part of the order. Now uh, I will speak on the leniency provisions mentioned in the Act. Uh, most competition laws either exempt specific sectors and or types of economic activities or have provisions for granting of such exemptions in given situation. Uh, it is worth observing that there are generally tend to be fewer exemptions in countries uh, which have recently adopted competition law. As compared to most more industrialized nations uh, in India, the Commission, while passing orders in respect of cartels, is vested with the discretion to impose a proportionate lesser penalty than levyable under the Act upon a producer, seller, distributor, trader, or service providers, provided the following conditions are met. First, such producer, seller, distributor, trader or service provider included in the cartel had to had made full and true disclosure in respect of alleged violations and such disclosure is vital. Such disclosure has been made before a set of DG's report on investigation order under 26, order under section 26. 
the party making disclosures continue to cooperate with the commission till the completion of proceedings before the commission the party making disclosure has complied with the condition on which the lesser penalty was imposed and not given false evidence it is uh, noteworthy that the above leniency may be reversed uh, if during the course of proceedings the commission is satisfied that any producer seller distributor trade or service provider included in the cartel had not complied with the conditions on which the lesser penalty was imposed given false evidence and disclosure made was not vital in such an eventuality such producer seller distributor trader or service provider may be tried for the offence and the host the lesser penalty imposed shall be liable to the imposition of penalty to which such person is liable the powers of central government in this world uh, there cannot be a pure competition there has to be some supervision by the government in public interest in its attempt to promote the welfare of society the government interferes to ensure competition in the market at the same time taking care not to interfere in the price and output decision of the private parties under the act the central government is empowered with certain powers uh, the central government is empowered to exempt by notification from the application of the act or any of its provision for a specified period first any class of enterprises if such exemption is necessary in the interest of security of the state or public interest any practices or agreement arising out of and in accordance with the obligation assumed by india under any treaty agreement or convention with any other country any enterprises which perform a sovereign function on behalf of the central government or a state government the central government is also empowered to issue in writing to the commissions direction from time to time on questions of policy other than relating to technical and administrative powers the commission shall be bound by them but as far as practicable given an opportunity to express its views before they are issued whether or not a question is one of policy the decision of the government is final the central government can also supersede the commission if uh, it's of the opinion that the commission is unable to discharge its function or perform duties by reason of circumstance beyond its control that the commission has persistently made a default in complying with any direction given by the central government under the act or circumstances exist which render it necessary in the public interest to do so before issuing such notification the central government shall give to the commission a reasonable opportunity to make representation and shall consider that representation in practice till september 30 2012 as i have the latest figures cci received about 300 cases uh, called information under the indian competition law relating to section 3 and 4 relating to uh, anti competitive agreements and abuse of dominance uh, respectively similarly till september 2012 cci received 80 mergers called combinations under the indian competition law cases till now the commission has been clearing all merger cases within the self imposed limit of 30 days against the 210 days provided by the law the 2012 amendment provides for 180 days to cci for clearing all combinations however that amendment uh, is subject to parliamentary oversight and uh, might or might not happen uh, the commission uh, continues to develop a understanding of various sectors and markets through both internal as well as externally commission market analysis finding of research studies undertaken are expected to create strong public opinion in favor of eliminating anti competitive practices prejudicial to the interest of trade industry commerce and customers these would be of immense help to commission's advocacy program for stakeholders like various departments of the central and state governments and the sectoral regulators cci continues its endeavors to regularly engage with other competition authorities uh, mature and young as well as relevant multilateral institutions such as oecd yungtad and icn the international cooperation is imperative in today's globalized economy it helps in the exposure to best practices and provides support for capacity building as well as knowledge sharing 
the information received under Section 19 of the Act uh, have been in diverse sectors such as uh, insurance, uh, travel, uh, automobile, manufacturing, real estate, pharmaceuticals, and the financial sector, and entertainment. Uh, the Commission has passed final orders in more than 100 cases. Uh, in three major cases relating to cement cartel, reality sector, and stock exchanges, respective penalties of around $1.2 billion, uh, $140 million, and $12 million have been imposed for anti-competitive practices, respectively. The Commission is also investigating suspected cartels in many vital sectors of the economy. Thank you.